morning, everyone, and welcome to the program. I'm Christiane Amanpour in Paris, where President-elect Emmanuel Macron faces the daunting task of building a parliamentary majority for his newly rebranded party, La République En Marche. The fledgling party now boasts a grand total of zero members of parliament. But the former socialist prime minister, Manuel Valls, announced today that he'll stand for election under Macron's new party banner. He is the new president's ex-boss, and he could be just the first of a wave of high-profile defections. Macron plans to meet with President Donald Trump during a NATO leaders' meeting late this month, and he's planning to put the hard sell on the U.S. to stay in the Paris Climate Accords. The White House is debating whether or not to withdraw from the pact. With a macro victory, one of the key dynamics in world affairs will be between a liberal bloc represented by Macron and Germany's Angela Merkel, and a U.S. president with an unusual affinity for Vladimir Putin's Russia. On the front line of these foreign policy priorities is Gérard Arrault. He's the French ambassador to the United States, and he joined me tonight from Washington. Ambassador Arrault, welcome to the program. And I want to first start by asking you, as France's ambassador to the United States, how you think the relationship between President Macron and President Trump will be going ahead. There was the first phone call between uh, President Trump and, and President-elect Macron, and everything went very well. Uh, actually, usually in this sort of phone calls, it's a lot of congratulations, of course, but uh, President Macron raised the issue of climate change uh, the, because, as you know, the, the Americans are thinking about staying or leaving the Paris Agreement, and President Macron emphasized the importance of the Paris Agreement. There was a very, a very good discussion. President Trump said that he was, he was uh, pondering on this issue, and, and the, the, both, the two men agreed uh, to meet again uh, in two weeks in Brussels. Do you think that President Trump will be persuaded to stay in the COP21, especially when he comes here to Europe, he has the NATO meetings and the G7, and everybody here, including apparently powerful members of his inner circle, want him to stay in? You know, uh, the, the Paris Agreement is a very flexible agreement. First, it's not uh, legally binding in, in the, the sense of the constitutional law in the United States. And secondly, the United States can change in a unilateral way their own commitments. So we do believe there is no real reason for the U.S. to get out of the Paris Agreement, even if the Trump administration is changing its energy policy. And that's the argument uh, that we have been raising here and that President uh, Macron has also uh, alluded to. When it comes to climate, during the campaign, Emmanuel Macron made this comment slightly sort of tongue-in-cheek, but this is what he said to the Americans. Please, come to France. You are welcome. It's your nation. We like innovation. We want innovative people. We want people working on climate change, energy, renewables, and new technologies. France is your nation. That was a sort of a dig at the kind of anti-factual, anti-science movement in the United States. What's your reaction to that? You know, uh, uh, France is an open country. And, and a lot of Americans, you know, have been living in France, have migrated to France, or have visited my country. And uh, President Macron is ju was just, in a humoristic way, emphasizing that. France will remain an open, tolerant, liberal, and forward-looking country. The Russians have been interfering all over the place. You're obviously watching the hearings on Capitol Hill. Uh, you know about the investigation into the hacking of the U.S. democratic process and the election there. And there was a massive hack of En Marche documents and emails just before uh, the deadline of this election, just on Friday. It didn't work here. What is your view of the danger posed by elements of the Russian regime? Actually, I think that uh, obviously uh, Russia is, uh, is a geopolitical problem for the European. It's not an existential threat. Russia is not the Soviet Union. So we have to find the right balance uh, between firmness and dialogue. We have to talk with the Russians. But we have also to be firm. We have also to send the right signals to tell the Russians that they are wrong and that we will react uh, to their uh, wrong acts. But again, 
firmness, but also dialogue. You were very, very adamant that had Marine Le Pen of the National Front won, in your words, it would have been a disaster for France and for Europe. Just remind us all again why you believe that, and do you believe that France dodged a major bullet? I think, yes, France dodged a major bullet because uh, the candidate of the National Front of the far right wanted France out of the EU and France out of the Euro. And it would have, been, it would have created a major uh, crisis, a major financial crisis, uh, and also, of course, a major political crisis. Uh, I belong to a generation which considers that the European Union is the best uh, defense that we have uh, against, uh, uh, you know, the, the old devils uh, that the Europeans have been facing for, for the last centuries. Two world wars, one genocide, it's enough. And so we have to work together and the European Union is the only way to do it. Uh, but I, I have to add that, in a sense, uh, Emmanuel Macron is facing an incredible challenge because in, if in the coming five years he is not responding uh, to the concerns of our citizens, in five years actually the far right may win. That in itself speaks volumes about France right now and, and others looking at extreme parties. But as you look, do you think for the moment this, this whatever they call it, a wave of populism or frankly ultranationalism, has that been stopped in France now? Has France stopped that wave? No, it has, it has been stopped but it could be a temporary stop again if the the president the president uh, is not able to implement his policies his policies of reform his policies of openness but also the policies of protecting uh, uh, the french the french citizens the french the french economy so it, it's it's a dual track on one side opening our country you know so that in a global world france is a global power but on the other side also, not forgetting uh, the citizens which are suffering from globalization and from automation. So uh, it, it, it's really thinking of a new way of making politics, of making economics. Uh, so it's really a daunting challenge for our young president. You have been very, very famous for your tweets throughout your diplomatic career. You're about to end your, your U.S. posting anyway, but I want to just read you a couple of your tweets. You retweeted uh, something that a reporter in America said after this election. French annoyingly retain the right to claim intellectual superiority over Americans. That's pretty funny. Yes, I think, you know, in my Twitter account, and, and I ask all your, uh, the audience, you know, really to, to, to follow me, I'm trying uh, to be serious, uh, but also uh, to add some personal, personal humor. Uh, really, uh, I think it's an idiosyncratic account. Uh, it's account of the French ambassador, but it's also the account of Gérard Arrault. Ambassador Gérard Arrault, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much.